contend that the damaged craft again became airborne and flew to its final crash site at either the location north of Roswell or 175 miles northwest of Roswell on the San Augustine Plains. Regardless of the dispute over the location, an element common to most scenarios was that, once recovered, the bodies were supposedly transported to the hospital at Roswell Army Airfield for autopsy. Also common to these theories was that the bodies were later shipped from Roswell Army Airfield to another facility, usually Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, or a host of other facilities. This is another area of further disagreement among UFO theorists for further evaluation and ultimate deep freeze storage. Research Methods in an attempt to untangle this collection of complicated assertions and determine if there was any validity to the reports of bodies, Air Force researchers faced the task of sorting through and examining anecdotal testimony of hundreds of witnesses. However, a large number of the accounts were eliminated by applying previously established facts to the testimonies. The July 1994 report to the Secretary of the Air Force clearly presented and documented these facts. A. The U.S. Army Air Forces did not recover an extraterrestrial vehicle and alien crew. This conclusion was based on extensive research that included a thorough review of both classified and unclassified materials at record depositories, archives, libraries, and research facilities throughout the nation. Of the millions of pages of material reviewed, there was no mention of any activities that even tangentially suggested such an event. Additionally, former and retired Air Force members and civilian contract scientists were located and released from any possible non-disclosure agreements they may have entered into regarding past classified activities. This release allowed them to freely discuss with Air Force researchers or any other persons information related to this issue. These releases were issued at the express written direction of the Secretary of the Air Force. Interviews with these persons yielded no information supporting extraterrestrial claims or any other unusual activities. B. The reports of bodies were not associated with Project Mogul. The Mogul balloon train did not was not designed to, nor could it carry passengers. Neither did it carry hazardous materials that would have caused injury, death, or mutilation to persons who may have come in contact with any of its components. C. Actual events, if any, that inspired reports of bodies did not occur in 1947. Based on extensive examinations of U.S. Army Air Force's activities in 1947, no evidence was found to support allegations that the Army Air Forces was involved in any uncommon operations other than the retrieval of the Mogul balloon train in the Roswell area in July 1947. Examination of research and development projects, aircraft crashes, errant missiles, and possible nuclear accidents yielded no information to support a 1947 claim. In light of these documented facts, the hundreds of anecdotal accounts were reduced to a few. Eliminated were accounts that were likely descriptions of materials known to be part of the Project Mogul balloon train and accounts describing transportation of these materials. From the remaining testimony, Air Force researchers developed the following set of working hypotheses to assist in identifying the actual events, if any, matching those described by the witnesses. A. Due to the number and great detail provided in some of the accounts, it was likely that some events actually due to the many similarities of the two crash site descriptions and the considerable distance between them, it was likely that more than one event with similar characteristics was the basis for these accounts. C. Since the account of bodies at the Roswell Army Airfield Hospital did not contain elements similar to reports of the two crash sites, it was likely that this account was unrelated to the crash site accounts. The hospital account will be addressed separately in Section 2 of this report. The remaining testimony was examined with regard both to the facts and to working hypotheses to determine if there were common threads or links connecting any of the accounts. 
If similarities were found, the next step was to determine if they were related to an actual event. Finally, if there were actual events, were they part of U.S. Air Force or U.S. government activities? Common Threads Careful examination of the testimony revealed that primary witnesses of the two crashed saucer locations contained descriptions common to both. These areas of commonality contain both general and detailed characteristics. However, before continuing, the accounts were carefully examined to determine if the testimony related by individual witnesses were of their own experiences and not a recitation of information given by other persons. While many aspects of the remaining accounts were judged to be similar, other aspects were found to be significantly different. The accounts on which the analysis is based were determined, in all likelihood, to have been independently obtained or observed by the witnesses. General Similarities The testimony presented for both crash sites generally followed the same sequence of events. The witnesses were in a rural and isolated area of New Mexico. In the course of their travels in this area, they came upon a crashed aerial vehicle. The witnesses then proceeded to the area of the crash to investigate and at some distance they observed strange looking beings that appeared to be crew members of the vehicle. Soon thereafter, a convoy of military vehicles and soldiers arrived at the site. Military personnel allegedly instructed the civilians to leave the area and forget what they had seen. As the witnesses left the area, the military personnel commenced with a recovery operation of the crashed aerial vehicle and crew. Detailed similarities. Along with general similarities in the testimonies, there also existed a substantial amount of similar detailed descriptions of the aliens and the military vehicles and procedures allegedly used to recover them. The first obvious similarity was the descriptions of the aliens. Mr. Gerald Anderson, an alleged witness of events at the site 175 miles northwest of Roswell, recalled, I thought they were plastic dolls. Mr. James Ragsdale, an alleged witness of the site north of Roswell, stated, They were using dummies in those damn things. Another alleged witness to a crash north of Roswell, Frank J. Kaufman, recalled that there was talk that perhaps an experimental plane with dummies in it was the source of the claims. Additional similarities were also noted. Mr. Vern Maltese, a second-hand witness of the site 175 miles northwest of Roswell, described the hands of the aliens as they had four fingers. Anderson characterized the hands as they didn't have a little finger. He also described the heads of the aliens as completely bald, while Maltese described them as hairless. The uniforms of the aliens were independently described by Anderson as one-piece suits, a shiny silverish-gray color, and by Maltese as one-piece and gray in color. The date of this event was also not precisely known. Maltese recalled that it may have occurred around 1950, and another second-hand witness, Alice Knight, stated, I don't recall the date. Witnesses of different sites also used the terms wrecker and 6x6 when they described the military vehicles present at the different recovery sites. One witness described seeing a medium-sized Jeep truck, and another witness described seeing a weapons carrier. A weapons carrier is a mid-sized Jeep-type truck. The Research Profile When the general and specific similarities were combined, a profile emerged describing the event or activity that might have been observed. The profile, which contains elements common to at least two, and in some cases all of the accounts, established a set of criteria used to determine what witnesses may have observed. The profile is as follows. A. An activity that if viewed from a distance would appear unusual. B. An activity of which the exact date is not known. C. An activity that took place in two rural areas of New Mexico. D. An activity that involved a type of aerial vehicle with dolls or dummies that had four fingers, were bald, and wore one-piece gray suits. E. 
an activity that required recovery by numerous military personnel and an assortment of vehicles that included a wrecker, a 6x6, and a weapons carrier. Based on this profile, research was begun to identify events or activities with these characteristics. Due to the location of the sites, attention was focused on Roswell Army Airfield, renamed Walker Air Force Base in 1948, White Sands Missile Range in Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico. The aerial vehicles assigned or under development at these facilities were aircraft, missiles, remotely piloted drones, and high altitude balloons. The operational characteristics and areas where these vehicles flew were researched to determine if they played a role in the events described by the witnesses. Missiles and Drones Missiles and drones were determined not to have been responsible for the accounts. The areas where the alleged crashes took place were, in all likelihood, too far from the White Sands missile range. Missiles were equipped with a self-destruct mechanism that was activated if it strayed off course or out of the White Sands missile range. Dummy or doll to be placed inside a missile or a drone. However, missiles were launched from White Sands carrying monkeys and other small animals aloft for scientific research. These projects were well documented and none of these missiles landed near either of the two crash sites. Footnote. From September 1961 until March 1965, 12 Atlas F Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles ICBMs, were deployed by the 579th Strategic Missile Squadron in areas surrounding Walker Air Force Base, New Mexico. These missiles were determined not to have been involved in the Roswell incident. Aircraft Aircraft seem just as unlikely as missiles to have been responsible for the extraterrestrial claims as outlined in the profile. Although additional research revealed the significant role dummies played in the test and evaluation of aircraft emergency escape systems, these dummies were used on board aircraft and on the high-speed test track at Holloman Air Force Base. However, aircraft test flights demanded strict adherence to established flight profiles over the instrumented portions of the White Sands Missile Range, many miles from the alleged crash sites. Dummies used on the high-speed track remained in the immediate vicinity of the track facilities at Holloman Air Force Base. This geographical impossibility ruled out dummies that were ejected from aircraft and those used on the high-speed track as a cause of alleged alien sightings. Aircraft accidents will be discussed extensively in Section 2 of this report. High Altitude Research Balloons The only vehicles not yet evaluated as a possible source of the accounts were high altitude research balloons. Previous reviews of early research balloon flight records revealed that trajectories of high altitude balloons were, at times, unpredictable and did not usually remain over Holloman Air Force Base or White Sands Missile Range. Many of the scientific payloads required recovery so the data collected during flight could be returned to the laboratory for analysis. These characteristics seem to fit at least some of the research profile. Atmospheric sampling apparatus or weather instruments, the typical payload of many high altitude balloons, could hardly have been mistaken for space aliens. A careful examination of the instruments carried aloft by the high altitude balloons revealed that one unique project used a device that very likely could be mistaken for an alien, an anthropomorphic dummy. An anthropomorphic dummy is a human substitute equipped with a variety of instrumentation to measure effects of environments and situations deemed too hazardous for a human. These abstractly human dummies were first 